Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I'm coming to you from Boonville, New York, Zone 4B. I sell cut flowers and I do so on a part-time side business basis. I know a lot of you think, Nicole, your farm is so big, you must be doing this full time. That's not the case. So this is a video that I never really wanted to do. People have been asking me about this for months and I just didn't really feel comfortable talking about income and amount of money that I spend on things. I've always been private about my income. People don't generally talk about how much money they make and how much money they invest in things. It's just a, a personal thing and I never really wanted to talk about that. But I see so many of you asking and, and hoping for this to replace full-time incomes that I just wanna be honest with how I've experienced flower farming so far. Now this is just my experience. These are my numbers. They're gonna to be totally different than anyone else's numbers, but I just wanna give you guys an idea of the realistic nature of doing this full time. And I don't consider this a career, I consider it a passion. It's a full time passion of mine. And I think even if you're not growing these and selling flowers, if you're just lover of flowers, if you're a gardener, if you're someone who loves to have their own small little cut flower garden for their house, I think you all can agree it's a passion. Please don't hate me. <laughs> Let's take the year 2020 for example. And my actual investments of 2020 started in 2019. So let's talk about what my investments were for the 2020 season. Okay, I spent about three thousand dollars on bulbs and that included uh, daffodils and tulips thousands and thousands of bulbs so i spent three thousand dollars on bulbs for the upcoming spring season i spent about one thousand five hundred dollars on peonies that was the first year that i put peonies into the ground i spent an additional five hundred dollars on seeds and another $500 on seed starting equipment. So that includes lights, shelves, flats, trays, pots, soil blockers, all of those things. That does not include my germination mix. That was an additional $300. I'm also including education into my investment. I purchased Lisa Mason Ziegler's course and Dave Dowling's course, which were combined for a total of about $800. I also needed fertilizer, hose, shovels, so before the year 2020 had even begun, I had already invested a lot. Add that all up, and that totals about $7,000. That is $7,000, and I did not put that on a line of credit. That was all money that I paid up front. I do have a freelance side job where I make some extra money, and I chose to invest that extra money into starting this business. But in reality, I already had invested so much more. Let's talk about that. I already own a home with 20 acres. So I already have the land and I'm paying for that in the form of a mortgage. And I also have a tractor. I already had a tractor. I have been gardening and growing vegetables and flowers on a larger scale for many, many years. So it was, I think, seven years ago now that my husband and I, we spent, I, I can't remember exactly how much our tractor cost, but it was between five and $10,000. It was not a cheap tractor. It's a smaller Kubota, but it did the job at the time. That $7,000 investment does not include the land and it does not include a tractor. Oh, also we had that a tiller attachment. We already had the tiller attachment and we already had a walk behind tiller because like I said, I've been growing flowers and vegetables for years. Okay, so now we're sitting at $7,000 in the hole before the 2020 season. Cue the spring and the bills just kept on coming. I invested about $800 in dahlias. I invested a couple hundred dollars more, I think $300 more in my lily bulbs. Oh yeah, the wildflower seed cost me $200. So there's an additional $1,300 on top of the $7,000 and I don't have a single flower to my name yet. Plus, I had already given away a lot of free bouquets that weren't even born yet. <laughs> they weren't even born, you know what I mean? So I had done some marketing saying, you know, I'll give away the first bouquet of, of 2020, um, enter into this drawing, share me on social media, comment, like, share, all of those marketing techniques. I had already given away flowers that I didn't even have yet. And then I believe I invested another $300 in my gladiolas. So we're looking at a grand total of about $9,000 in investments. And these are all rounded figures. I actually pulled out the paperwork and took a closer look. I might actually dive into a deep depression. So we're not gonna do that. My husband does our taxes. <laughs> he knows those numbers, I don't. Okay, 
Let's start selling, yay! My very first dive into sales was the doorstep daffodils. We were in COVID, it was late March, everyone was on lockdown, we had just started the government shutdown and people were wanting for any, like any sign of brightness and hope they were grasping towards. So I wanted to offer very cheap things for my customers just to get my foot in the door and to let people know, hey, I'm here and I grow flowers. So I did something called doorstep daffodils where for $15, I would deliver a bunch of 10 daffodils with a cute little ribbon on it to anyone. I was going half hour, 45 minutes around the area and just delivering $15 bouquets and they were only 10 stems of daffodils and they made people's day. I got to be honest with you. They were they were so fun for me and that's when I I was hooked. I was hooked at the feeling that I got seeing the faces of the people that I was giving these flowers to. So over the course of about 2 weekends of selling doorstep daffodils, I made about $500. Let's talk about the financial investment of daffodils quickly. Now you can buy a daffodil between, let's say 30 and 60 cents a bulb at a wholesale price. Now that's your initial investment. Daffodils stay in the ground and they multiply. So while you're selling a stem, say maybe a dollar to a wholesale or a florist or a dollar 50 or $2 retail, anything that you're making in the years after that is purely profit because that bulb doesn't need any maintenance. And in fact, it multiplies, giving you more stems throughout the years. This is opposed to tulips that don't really stay in the ground and multiply for flower farming. They're considered annuals. So for an investment in tulips of say, anywhere between 30 and 70 cents for the specialty ones, you can sell them for between a dollar to $2 between wholesale and resale, retail. Between wholesale and retail, then that's, that's it. You have to start again fresh the next year. So are tulips really something that are going to make you money? A little bit. I don't think you're going to lose money selling tulips, but I do think that it is a way to get in the door with some really pretty flowers really early in the season. And it lets people know, Hey, I'm here and I grow flowers. Okay. So after the doorstep daffodils, we've gone from $9,000 in the hole to 8,500. We're climbing our way up. Okay, let's talk about Mother's Day. Mother's Day was an unexpected success for me. It was my first time doing a Mother's Day sale. I like to normally hang out on the couch and do nothing for Mother's Day. Like Brad will cook me dinner, it'll be like nice, the kids kind of wait on me, hand and foot, it's no big deal. But I decided to spend my Mother's Day spreading more joy. So I did hand tied bouquets. I did bouquets and uh, I did Narcissus. People don't like the way that I say that. Narcissus bouquets, daffodils. They're daffodils. I'm just gonna say daffodils so nobody makes fun of the way that I say it. I did daffodil bouquets and I did tulip bouquets. I did 12 stems plus some filler. I used some uh, foraged dried fern heads and stuff like that. And I had them in tissue paper with a ribbon and I made those deliveries on Mother's Day for $35. The furthest delivery I had was an hour away and I didn't charge anything extra. Like I said, my first time out the door, I'm just trying to get my name out there to let people know I grow things. I've said that three times now, but that's, that's the, that's the thing. You're trying to get your business noticed and let people know that you're here. Okay. So I think that I did 15 deliveries on mother's day, creating a grand total of $525. Okay. So we're digging into that hole just a little bit more. I kicked the camera. <laughs> We're back. This just in. I also sold a few tulip bouquets here and there, left and right, all over the place. And I also started selling to florist at this point. And I also did have a special anniversary bouquet that was valued at, I believe, $50 they wanted to spend. So, oh yeah. So also for Mother's Day, in the weeks ahead of Mother's Day, I sold my CSAs. So I sold a total of 18 CSAs for $100 a piece. So that's a total of $1,800. So now our debt is reduced to $6,175. It's not debt. It's not debt. It's paid free and clear, but it was my money that I invested. So now we're climbing up the ladder, getting out of that hole. So for much of the early summer, I was filling my CSA orders and that means that I'm not making money on those. I had already gotten the money from the CSAs and now I'm just fulfilling those orders. 
I did have an event center reach out to me for some sunflowers. I had some more florist orders and I did have some other special bouquet orders. I think a retirement order and a, a few birthdays in between. So uh, while I was getting my CSAs prepared, I did make an additional $300. And then I had my first porch sale and that was a great success. And then the bouquet bars were born and I ended up having, I think, I think four or five bouquet bars in total because I would have a Friday night one and a Saturday morning one as well. So in total, I think I had five bouquet bars and all, all said and done after the end of those bouquet bars, I made about $3,000 from the porch sales. That leaves us still in the negative and that's okay. That's what I expected. I knew I would be investing more into my company for the first few years. I definitely did. Now this is, I think we're about $3,000 in the hole now. I did have some other special orders, you know, maybe a few, a few hundred dollars more. And I think when all is said and done, I sold about $7,000 worth of flowers on the farm. That includes some seedlings that I sold earlier in the year, vegetable starts, you know, a couple hundred dollars of those. So I had a $9,000 investment and I had a $7,000 return. So did the farm make money? Yes, the farm made money. I made $7,000, but when you take out the investments that I put into the farm in the form of $9,000, I didn't come out on top for this first year, big, big selling. So I, still work my nine to five job four days a week. I still do part-time freelancing and I'm doing the farm as much as I can. And I also do freelance videography and all that other stuff. So I have a full plate and that is how I am able to invest and build my farm without going into debt. If you guys checked out Serena and Ian from You Can't Eat the Grass, their video, I'll link it above, their video about how much their farm made, it's a similar story because that's just how it goes when you start a business. I just want people to know that walking away from a full-time job with benefits and thinking that you're gonna replace that income the first couple of years flower farming out the gate, that's just not realistic. And I'm not telling you this to burst your bubble. I'm telling you this so you have a realistic expectation of the money you're going to be bringing in. I would not be able to do this if I didn't have those extra sources of income. And I will tell you this right now, I will always have multiple streams of revenue coming in because that's the only way to support my farm. Even if I were to leave my nine to five job, I would not stop freelancing. I enjoy it too much. I, I love doing that and it's good money to freelance and have, have skills that people want. So I won't stop doing that even if I did leave my nine to five job. Okay, some of you are probably thinking $9,000, that's astronomical. Well, <laughs> yes, it is. You could, you could buy a couple hundred dollars worth of seed packets and sell bouquets at a roadside stand and make a couple thousand dollars a year and come out on top your first year. You absolutely can. But if you're trying to make this a full-time job to support a family, you have to put some money into it. And I was, some of the comments on, uh, this is a common topic on the Flower Farmers Facebook page. And a lot of the farmers who are doing this full-time have invested six figures into their business. You have to remember, I don't have a hoop house. I don't have a greenhouse. I don't have any of that stuff. I don't have irrigation set up. All of those things cost money and you have to think about your return on investment over time. I think a hoop house is a great investment for me. I just haven't made it yet. All right, and something I haven't talked about yet is tax. You have to pay tax. Let's talk about the numbers that I would need to even net $20,000. I have about 16 weeks in a season of selling flowers. And now that is the early bulb season. And then in late June, early July, when my annual flowers start, and then all the way through until first frost, which this year was mid September. It was two weeks early, but you have to account for that. You can't just say, well, I'm going to sell flowers through October and then have a big frost on September 15th and it kills your entire crop. You can't do that. So I am going to, I'm going to conservatively say that I have 16 weeks in my season. In order to make over $30,000 in gross sales, I would need to sell $2,000 worth of flowers every single week. That's an insane amount of stems. Let's break it down in bouquets. And you can do it wholesale, but a lot of us are doing market bouquets. Those market bouquets, you would have to sell 133 market bouquets every single week 
to gross $2,000. And then you have to pay sales tax and income tax and all of those other taxes. And I figure that to be about 28% of your gross is going to go towards taxes, which leaves me a little down, like down $25,000 maybe. And then you have to think also about the investment that you made. And I'm hoping that maybe a couple of years from now, I'll only have to invest maybe $2,000 a year into the farm in the form of seeds and germination mix and maybe some tulip bulbs and some gladiolas. I'm sorry if this is a lot of numbers. I'm just trying to make it make sense to people who want to do this as a full-time job. And those peonies that I've spent several thousand dollars on, I have not even seen a return investment on those at all yet. But three years from now, I'll be making money on those peonies for decades to come. So it's really a slow game. It's slow flowers. It's a slow game. You have to wait. Ooh, I'm kicking the camera. <laughs> I plan on putting a hydrangea field in this, this year. That's gonna cost me a couple thousand dollars and it's gonna be four years before I can even harvest off those plants. So it's really all about where you see your business in the long run and what you wanna do because the investment is sometimes you're not gonna see a return on that for years. I truly am not wanting to um, talk anyone out of doing anything at all. I just want people to understand, don't put your two week notice in at your job and walk away thinking you're gonna make 30 or 40 or $50,000 a year to replace your salary uh, coming out the gate. The wedding industry though, <laughs> I have not gotten into that. The wedding industry, that's where you can make some cash dollars. Okay, so for 2021, things are looking bright. I'm very happy with what we did this year. I'm ecstatic. You know, when 2020 first started, I didn't know, is anyone gonna buy my stuff? I had sold flowers the, the year before, but I was selling to family and friends. I didn't know if the general public was going to accept me into their world. So it was, you know, it was a guessing game as to what we were gonna do. And I honestly had some sleepless nights thinking, I just put $3,000 of bulbs into the ground. <laughs> like, you know, you never know what's gonna happen. So the future is looking bright. I'm so excited about everything that we have going on here at Flower Hill Farm. I have a waiting list for my CSA. We've got more, <laughs> more excitement than I ever thought possible for my small little farm here. And I've never given myself a paycheck. All of that money that I got here that, you know, how here's my hole, here's where I'm at. That $7,000 that I made this year, it's been invested back in the farm already. I have not taken any of it. For me in a short season, I think a hoop house really would benefit me and I really, really, really know that I need one because I can take my 16 week season and make it into like a 20 week season or maybe even a 22 week season. I don't know, there are a lot of possibilities, but it really, you have to be smart with your investments. Make sure you're putting your money in the right spot. Make sure you're gonna have a return on that investment. investment. It might not be that season, but eventually the returns gotta be there. I think one of the most important things that the flower farmers can do as a community is to make sure that you're not underselling your stuff. Uh, you're really doing a disservice to the people who are investing so much time and money into making this something that they can do for a living. And it's really, it cripples the whole business when you do that. And I just want you guys to be aware that while you think, well, I'm just gonna put a couple dollars on my bouquet. Well, you have someone sitting next to you at the farmer's market who is, trying to feed their family with that $15 bouquet that they can't sell. Anyway, all right, I think that's enough. I just don't wanna see people go into debt and bankrupt themselves thinking that they're going, it's, it's not a get rich quick scheme. It's not, it's a passion and it's a passion that you need to be patient with. It's hard work, it's dedication, and it's a labor of love. I'm sorry if this was boring for you. I just really, a lot of people have been asking me for this video and I, I'm really uncomfortable with it. I'm so nervous to even put this out there, but I just want you guys to know, and this Sunflower Steve touched upon this too. He said he couldn't do what he has done and become the success that he is if he didn't have the income of his wife in order to make his dreams come true. So it's not just me saying this, this is a lot of the professionals who are successful in this business. It doesn't happen right away. So just to recap, I invested $9,000 into my farm in 2020 and I sold about $7,000 worth of flowers and I was all in. 
So I was all in to sell $7,000 worth of flowers. So you can see how much time and effort and energy that I put into it for that kind of production, which I'm super happy with. You know, my goal is to double that in 2021. So mm, wish me luck. <laughs> All right, that's enough. This is the only time you're going to hear me crunch numbers on here. I will not do this again. I am all about, like, you know, I am not an expert in this. I am learning. I am a master student. I am learning all the time. I just like to share my experiences with you guys. So that's what I wanted to share. <laughs> I'm trying to make scary faces for a thumbnail. <laughs> That was it, that was it, I think that was it. No matter where you are in your flower journey or why or where or how you're growing flowers, I wish you the best. And I'm so excited for all of the 2021 growing season. Ah, I can't wait till it's here. So, see you soon. <laughs>